Hello! Welcome to another commute. On a fine Thursday evening. managed to actually make it home. This hasn't exactly been the best of days. Oh. It's a pretty sky tonight. Not quite dark. Huh. Look, Corvette. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Working most of the day and super busy in the morning. It was great. Pounding out stuff, big body orders, making money. And then the our cataloging was a little slow. It's like, huh? I wonder what's up with that. Just kind of, you know, take a little longer every time you look something up. A little bit longer, a little bit longer. And then I'd put it in a VIN. And it told me it didn't work. And I checked it with the customer and I'm going back and forth. And I'm like, this isn't working. I'm like, you know what? I'll just do it manually. <laughs> it wouldn't let me do it manually. And then it crashed. And it wasn't just my computer. It's everybody's computer. Then we called other dealers. It was their computers too. Whole network crashed. Uh, nobody, at least nobody around us had cataloging for the entire afternoon. I mean, this was like uh, probably 3 o'clock when it failed all the way to 6 and, you know, every time you try to log in it was, it was down. It was like, uh, this sucks. I mean, and, you know, a couple of the, the guys made remarks, you know, like, hey, oh, don't you have a book? It's like, we haven't had a book in 10 years, 20 years, since the 80s. They quit making backup sets of parts cataloging in the 80s. We have books through the 80s, but nobody has an 80s car anymore, so, uh, and, you know, it's like, how much money does that cost the company when the network crashes? And there's no backup. There's no backup system. And then no way for you to uh, effectively do your job. I mean, be like going to a construction site and taking away everybody's hammer or nail gun. It's like, nope, you're not working now. It's like... <laughs> and, you know, we've had the phone systems crash before. Uh, and... Uh, things like that and it just makes you wonder that sometimes it's like you know I love technology technology is cool it does all kinds of awesome things I mean I got a you know cell phone that it, you know can do everything you know mostly look up Google where you want to go for dinner uh, but it's got maps and you know all kinds of stuff I mean it's got more computing powder on on my hip to play music while I ride my motorcycle than we use to send people to the moon yeah. But, if it crashes, there's no backup. Nobody knows how to read a map anymore. Uh, there's no pay phones anywhere. Good luck asking somebody, hey, can I borrow your phone? No. And the same with our cataloging. I mean, our computers worked, our internet worked, because I was able to do other things. But the cataloging crashes, there's no backup. There's no, well, we've got a workaround. So, you just stand there. And as we weave technology deeper and deeper into our lives, with no backup system, what happens when the thing crashes or, you know, the stupid motherboard goes, meh? Uh, you know, there's just, you know, there used to be a, 
way to get around that stuff and now the system crashes system's crashed you're done have a nice day tell somebody can figure out how to boot it back up which you know i'm sure there's an it guy fiercely trying to fix whatever's wrong but then network starts back east who knows maybe the power out to the server room or the roof collapsed or frequently knows so how long how much money does it take to to bring our system back up what do we do in the meantime what does any organization do in the meantime when their systems crashed? You know, if your server room's roof collapses because of the unprecedented cold, you know, maybe a pipe froze in the ceiling and flooded it, and, you know, good luck with that. You know, how does how do you function with no backup? I mean, 10 years ago, we had a backup. We actually used two cataloging systems. Before that, they had Microfish and Books for most stuff. You know, there was there was backups. Now there's just no backup. And I think that's the scariest part about technology. Is one, a lot of things are linked to the internet that I don't think should be linked to the internet, like power plants. When they talk about hackers, you know, getting into the power plant. I'm like, why the hell is the power plant on the internet? That is anything that has to do with the systems of the power plant linked to the internet and I'm sure there's network reasons you know because all the power plants are interconnected to make the uh, the uh, long distance transmission lines and all that stuff work and I'm sure there's reasons but wouldn't you think that would be a standalone separated system not just on the internet I mean why wouldn't that be its own network with its own servers you can't tell me there's not a power plant in each one of the uh, little things that couldn't function as a server room too. You know, they all got backup generators. To keep it from being on the internet and susceptible to freak only knows who. To hacking it in to, you know, make the lights blink at will. But that goes to back to the same thing. I mean, okay, so they get hacked, and you pull the plug on whatever's hacking you. Is there a backup? Can you run it without the internet? Can you go over and flip a toggle switch and turn your plant back on without, you know, a thousand lines of code? Uh, blinky lights, what are you doing, Chuck? You know... Now, is it is it feasible? And like our communications, same thing. I, I, phone systems. It's not just a phone. It's a voice over IP system. So it's internet driven. It has a server. Well, can you plug into the old-fashioned wall jack if you need to? Does that even exist? I mean, phone system used to be one of those things that worked almost no matter what. It didn't even need power half the time because it used its own low current to, to function. So sometimes it would work when the power didn't. And now I don't think so. It's probably all internet driven and goes through chains of hubs and 60 different things and all the switchboards are completely electronic. So no power, no phones. I mean, you know, keep hearing stories that Puerto Rico still out of power, which... It's been how many months now? That's terrifying. I mean, it, it's, it, I can't imagine that. You know, it destroyed a bunch of infrastructure, but still. But anyways, you know, what about everywhere else? You know, and how much does it, how long does it take to restore? With no backup. I mean, if my mobile phone quit working, now I don't have a house phone anymore. That is one thing. I don't have a house phone. So that would be kind of sucky. 
but I do have home internet service, so might defeat the thing. But I also still know how to read a map. So navigation isn't totally out of the question. And I have a pretty reasonable idea where to come by information in books and other places that isn't, you know, my little pocket computer. But, so, it, it's, I would like to see, the technology is great, I love technology, but a backup. If the cataloging crashes, do we have a standalone? Do we have a, a disk that we can, you know, ram into something that, to give us something? Paper catalogs, I know, save the environment, but I have trouble believing at this stage of the game that any of our paper products come from anything other than a managed forest. Uh, when I went back east to Georgia, uh, you could see all the pine trees. They were all planted by human hand because, you know, they were all in rows. But they were cutting down and putting on logging trucks. And, and uh, I assume that's going to be paper. Probably toilet paper. But it's going to be a paper product of some sort. And then replanted. And you'd see fields, you know, where we're nearly ready to harden this, a little bit shorter, little baby ones, the baby ones were cute, it's like, ah, baby pine trees. But it's all managed forest, and it's everywhere. You know, Westinghouse has probably been doing the same thing for, well, a hundred years now. They kind of have it figured out. So, would it hurt? to print a set of books for your dealers so you have backups well, I'm not sure it would or if you don't want to do that how about a CD-ROM or a couple of CD-ROMs hold the information and stuff it in a computer and yeah it probably wouldn't be as easy and no of course it wouldn't have all the uh, latest updates but it would keep your entire parts department from standing around staring at each other for hours because your system's down why you fix stuff and the same thing with everything else is there a backup if you get hacked is there a way to operate it manually is, is there a backup plan you know I have a backup if this breaks I have a backup in fact, my backup's actually been in the shop. <laughs> but that's why I have more than one, because I've always had jobs where calling and saying, yeah, my car's broken, I'm not coming, it was never an option. When I went to motorcycles, having one was great because it was the newest, easiest, most reliable thing I had. And then I always had cars in case it didn't start on the rare occasion. But... When I started being dependent on the motorcycles, because the old cars were old and a pain, and the wife drove the new one, I always had more than one. That seems silly, you know, like, uh, you don't need more than one bike, but bike batteries die. And sometimes they don't tell you before, unlike the Concourse battery that I think has been dying for about a month now, because it'll start and sell me low battery, it starts just fine, and like, uh -huh. But, so, you know, if I get on one and it goes click, like this one's done before, okay, uh, next, and then I can fix it later. So it's not a crisis. It's not me standing there going, well, well, you know, fuck it. <laughs> uh, and I think as much as the technology pushes on, that needs to be more emphasis put in. Yes, the technology is absolutely fabulous. It's great. It should never crash. But maybe there should be a backup if it does. Something. Something analog. Something silly. Uh, something that's not, you know, digital or susceptible to, you know, the sun having a moment or, you know, some 
dude pushing the wrong button. You know, there should be an analog way to take care of things. Just in case. That guy's driving on the wrong side of the road. Uh, just in case something happens. In case the internet fails. For whatever reason. I mean, network failures aren't completely uncommon. You know? In case a server room floods or, you know, has a gust of wind and take the transformer out or who knows what. It's backups aren't a bad idea. You know? Especially as, as digital and techy as everything is, having a backup plan is always a good idea. So, well, at least that's my opinion. And for whatever that's worth, you know, I'm just a guy that sells parts and rides a motorcycle and probably doesn't know the first freaking thing about technology except for how to push the button to make the little blue light come on and it go, woo, look at that. <laughs> and I can sit there and go, why don't you work? <laughs> I was fiddling with one of my apps last night on the phone and it kept telling me the network wasn't available. It kept up with an error message and I just kept clicking the OK button and it would pop it back to the air. <laughs> my wife's like, is that solving anything? I'm like, no, but it's fun. But there again, that's something I actually... <laughs> need to look at maybe fixing because I don't have a backup plan. <laughs> it's one of those apps that I use that I need to use about once or twice a month but there isn't a backup too and it's kind of weaved into the fabric of my life. So I'm actually trying to figure out what a backup plan is if the phone app doesn't work again. I think I can log in through the regular internet but I think it's clunky. I think that's why I use the phone. One of those things. So, anyways, I think I've plattled enough. Hopefully, everybody can see that moon, because it's really kind of cool. I mean, it's been a neat sky on the way home. And the moon's just a little silver sliver. And you can kind of see the shape of the rest of it behind it. And I hope you all had a good week. And 2018 is treating you way better than it's me. And I will see you all on the next one.